What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender architectural modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm super excited to check out this brand new, um, it's kind of an add-on, it's kind of a custom build of Blender that allows you to work with parametric assets inside of your models. So this allows you to work with like adjustable cabinets and other things like that. I'm really excited about where this is going. So let's go ahead and just jump into this. All right, so a couple days ago, Andrew Peel, basically put out a video talking about Home Builder, which is a new asset management tool that he's been working on for Blender. And basically what this tool does is it allows you to work with, um, it allows you to work with parametric asset libraries inside of Blender. And so what that allows you to do is work with things like uh, cabinets and other things like that. And so it, I will link to this video in the notes down below. It's very in-depth and teaches you how to use everything inside of this tool. But you can also go to this link which I will also link to in the notes down below where you can download um, the version of Blender that allows you to work with this parametric asset library. And so there's a couple steps you have to follow in order to do this. This is 100% free, by the way, so you can download this and start working with this right now. So the first thing you need to do is you need to download this custom build of Blender that includes this Pi clone, which is the additional um, code that allows you to work with those parametric asset libraries. You can click on that link right here in order to download that. And so the download link is right here. Note if you're working on Mac or Linux, um, it's currently not available for those. It's only available for Windows. But what you want to do is you want to download that file and then open it up. And what it's going to do when you do that is it's going to open up a new window of Blender, specifically labeled PyClone. So it's going to say PyClone. It's also going to have a slightly different icon in the upper left hand corner. So you can tell it apart from the other versions you have on your computer. But then what we want to do is we want to add the PyClone workspace and enable the add-ons. And uh, I will link to an instructions page about this as well. But the first thing we want to do is we want to add a workspace. So I'm going to click right here and then we're going to go down to PyClone. We're going to click on PyClone. What that's going to do is that's going to add a workspace specifically for working with PyClone. Notice how this gives you information over on the left hand side about different things that you can bring in. But now we need to add or we need to activate some library add-ons as well as PyClone itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit preferences and we want to enable three things. The first is we want to enable asset management PyClone. So I'm going to click right here in order to do that. We're also going to look for the home builder library and all of these should be included with that downloadable package file that I linked to before. We also want to enable the toy box library right here. So we want to enable those three things and then we should be good to go. Um, one thing we do probably want to do is we want to save our preferences. So we just want to click on this button right here and click on save preferences. So the other thing we want to do is we also want to save this as a startup file. We want to go to file defaults save startup file and it's going to ask if we want to do that we're going to click on this right here well now whenever we open up this version you can see how you're going to get this workspace when you open it up so we're good to go we're going to do a new general file so now let's start taking a look at everything in this library so we're going to start by clicking on these options right here, you can see how there's different options in here for different libraries, right? There's the Home Builder library. There's some other libraries in here that don't really have anything in them yet. We can talk about those in a future video. Um, I don't want to worry too much about that for right now. For right now, I want to focus specifically on the options contained inside of this Home Builder um, dropdown. So this gives me different assets that we can then drag into our model. So. For example, I'm going to go ahead and delete out my default model, and then I'm going to click and drag a wall in. So notice how when I click and drag a wall in, what this is going to allow me to do is this is going to allow me to click and place it. Well then, I can move my mouse and click again in order to place the wall. And notice how if I move my mouse, I can set multiple pieces of wall if I want to. I can also right click in order to set that, so to finalize it. So you can see how bringing things in is really easy. You just drag them in. One of the cool things about this is when you drag this in, you can then mouse over different things and notice how this is snapping to different things. So for example, when I move this up against the wall, it's actually kind of snapping to the wall and moving along the wall. It's also orientating itself or orienting itself properly when I do this. But if I click, you can see how this places this dishwasher model back up against the wall. 
All right, so now let's take a look at the cabinets. And so one thing to know, first of all, is if you go to cabinets and you drag this in and you get an error message, try right clicking on the icon and running this as administrator. Um, I was having some issues when I didn't run this as an administrator. So when you first open everything up, um, just right click run as administrator and that should fix that error that fixed it for me so um anyway so you can use this to bring in these cabinets which i really like because they look really good first of all just uh just kind of as a start but then in addition and i'm going to delete this back out because i didn't put it where i wanted it to be but in addition you can also adjust things like your cabinets your walls other things like that so the way that you can do that is you can click on this button right here for library. And so notice how with your library, you can adjust um, the different widths and heights and all these different things having to do with your cabinets. So if I click on cabinet construction, for example, you can adjust the base assembly size, the setback, all those different parts and pieces in here. So you can also set this to have different materials. Um, as well as molding is not done yet, um, as well as adjusting the different kinds of doors that you have. But basically, you can come through and you can adjust all of these different things. And then in addition, once you do that, let's say that you were to place a cabinet. So let's bring this cabinet in. Um, then we'll click and we'll align it with this object. By the way, I love that this just kind of snaps to objects that are in here so that you don't have to do a lot of aligning. But notice how when you place this in here, um, you can actually you can actually right click on this and click on the button for cabinet prompts and you can adjust this. So notice how you can come in here and you can adjust the width of this cabinet. So let's say you wanted this to be 32 inches, you could just put a new value of 32. So in addition, you can also adjust if there's like filler panels on the side. Um, just a ton of different things in here. I am super, super excited about this add-on. So within the cabinet prompts, another cool thing you can do is you can add a sink. So you can check this box. And then if you click under the sample options, you can click in here and you can select a sink. Notice how this is adding a sink right here. Um, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click in here. We can also add a faucet. So there's a couple different faucets that you can use in here as well. So I, I feel like this is exactly the kind of architectural modeling tool that Blender has needed to uh, really make the process a lot easier. Like I don't have to go through and do a whole bunch of extra modeling or figuring a whole bunch of stuff out. I can literally just bring this in. I can literally just drag this in mouse over this and just place a cabinet. And if I want to adjust it, I can adjust it. So like I said, very, very excited about this add-on in general. Notice how it's also doing snapping if I mouse over different objects. So it's actually snapping to the center of this object right here. So I can use this to really quickly add these upper cabinets as well. So another tool that's in here. Notice how all of these assets are parametric, meaning if you right click on them, you can find the prompts that are in here and you can actually adjust them. So like for example, let's say I wanted a floor in this room. Well, I can just click on the button for add floor. So notice how when I add floor, that floor gets placed in here. That's a floor object. And then there's floor prompts that you can use in order to adjust the scale. You can use it to adjust the size. You can use it to adjust the way that this texture sits on the floor. So for example, let's say I was to take these 111 or so notice how you can click in here and you can adjust this just by dragging this in order to resize your flooring material. So we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And so that allowed me to add this floor really quickly. Now I have not messed around with adding custom materials on here. I'm sure that you can. Um, that's something that we can maybe talk about in a future video. So now let's say we wanted to add a door. Well, we could click the drop down right here for doors and windows. Notice how there's doors already built in here. So I can just click and drag this, mouse over my wall. Notice how this is snapping to my wall object. So if I click, it's just gonna add a door just like that. One thing to note about this, by the way, is I'm finding a little bit of instability right now with the undo function. So I would recommend that you go ahead and you save fairly often just to make sure that you're uh, getting the changes that you've made in here and uh, you're not losing them in case it crashes. But let's say I was to click on this door, right click, you can click on the entry door prompts and adjust the door. So 
We could adjust the width of the door. You could adjust the direction of the swing. You could turn your handles on and off. You could also add some different kinds of trim around the outside. Um, so just really a fantastic tool for making changes in here. And I'm liking how I can just come back and I can just change it again. So if I want to change something else, um, I'll just come in here and just make the change and click on OK. If I decide I want to change something else in the future, I can do that as well. Now, one thing, and you can also adjust the location just by adjusting the X or Z locations in here. So you can actually move your doors around as well. Plus, there's the ability to actually have your door open and closed. So again, just the, the parametric nature of this, the ability to be able to go back and actually make changes and uh, not be kind of stuck with what you put in here is just a fantastic addition to Blender. I'm super excited about this tool. Um, you can add windows to your walls. So I'm going to bring this window over here and place it right here. I'm going to right click. And then if you don't like where it placed it, you can select it, go to your window prompts, and you can adjust things like your height, your location, your kind of frame, and your kind of insert. All right, so that should give you an overview of how everything works. Download this and give it a try. So currently the developer is working on getting his Patreon page up and running. He's also going to have more asset libraries available in the future. So um, when that's available, I would really recommend supporting him. We really want to support guys that are doing like th work like this for Blender. This is really what could take it to the next level from an architectural modeling standpoint. So I would say of all the add-ons that I've tried so far, this is probably the one that I'm most excited about. Um, mostly just because you can go back and change everything once you've placed it and it seems to be fairly stable. So um, I would love to hear what you think about this in the comments down below. So I would love to hear what you think about this add-on in the comments down below. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.